Hey there guys, welcome back to my fantasy fight series. So, I asked you guys for a few suggestions for um, any fantasy fights that you guys want me to talk about. Basically any fight that isn't going to happen. Could be involving retired fighters that um, you know you, I could theorise on and whatnot. And one fight that I got back from a couple of people that, that you'd like me to talk about was a really interesting one. Joe Calzaghe against Andre Ward. Now, th this is assuming both guys at their peak, so b both of these guys at their prime, obviously, two former um, unified super middleweight champions, um, didn't actually fight too far apart, Kauzagi was just a little bit before Andre Ward's time, and when, when Joe Kauzagi was retiring, Andre Ward was rising through the ranks as a contender and whatnot, so this is a fight that could have happened given a, a couple more years of activity for Joe, and it would have been interesting to see this fight, but yeah, it never happened. And we're here to theorise on it. So let's talk about this fight. Now, really interesting one to me, this. Now, I know both of these fighters very well. Now, Joe Calzaghe, I grew up watching Joe Calzaghe. You know, he was my favourite fighter, without a doubt, when I was a kid growing up. And, you know, when I was a teenager. And it was actually watching Joe Calzaghe that made me want to get into boxing. You know, he was kind of the one that sort of inspired me. And, yeah, because, again, like, like I said, he's the guy I, I grew up watching the most. You know, because when I was a kid, he was number one in the UK, you know, he was the man, he was undisputedly the best fighter in the country, he was a pound for pound level fighter, and um, of course he retired undefeated, both of these guys in fact retired undefeated officially, Andre Ward, um, we, we all know he lost to Kovalev, that was a disgusting robbery, but yeah, he, uh, officially, uh, officially he retired undefeated, I mean, Kauzagi himself had a couple of decisions that a lot of people thought he lost, but um, he managed to to win the fight, you know, by close decision and whatnot, and, um, yeah, how would this fight go? I'll tell you how I think this fight would go. This would be the type of fight, in my personal opinion, that would be, while it would be interesting on it from a technical point of view, this is, this would be one of them fights that is incredibly ugly. This would be one of them fights that would be incredibly dirty, incredibly scrappy, and messy, and, difficult to watch in my opinion this this would be a very very difficult to watch fight it would be one of them fights that would be th th there'd be a lot of grinding in this fight it would be a fight that would take a lot out of both guys but it wouldn't be particularly action-packed now like i said i've watched um pretty much calzaghi's whole career in fact i've got joe calzaghi's whole career on dvd and, and as for Andre Ward, I've, I've seen pretty much all his fights. I've followed his career since, you know, before the Super 6 and all that. And based on fights that I've seen of both of these guys and opponents that they have in common and stuff like that, there's a few fights that I want you guys to look at. Now, Joe Calzaghe had several fights in his career where he was given a really tough time against opponents that he was supposed to have beaten handily, you know, guys who he was a huge favourite over. That was a thing with Calzaghe. He was a fighter who tended to fight to the level of his opposition. When he was going into a fight that was 50-50, where a lot of people thought he would lose, he tended to win with no problems whatsoever. However, when he was fighting somebody he was expected to walk through, that was when Calzaghe tend to have problems. For example, one of the hardest fights, and you can go back and, and look at these fights if you don't believe me, one of the hardest fights that Calzaghe had in his entire career, this was, I would say, probably the fight where he had the most trouble, was when he fought a guy called Kabari Salem. If you guys haven't seen that fight, Kabari Salem, and, and the reason I bring him up, the reason why I talk about that fight is because Kabari Salem was, in many ways, very similar, very similar to Andre Ward, in the sense that he was an incredibly dirty and rough and awkward and just messy fighter. Now, he wasn't quite as skilled as Ward, didn't really have the background, you know, in the amateurs that Ward had, but I'd say in, in some ways he was a little bit more, um, you know, he, he, was, he was a bit more physically imposing than Ward. I think he was a bigger puncher than Ward. And um, he actually, he dropped Calzaghe, uh, dropped him in the fourth round quite heavily, um, took him the distance, cut him, you know, get, well, he, you know, he roughed him up, stuck the head in his face, you know, just took him the distance. There were there were point deductions, um, and it was a really hard and, and brutal night. And Kauzagi, towards the end of that fight, was out of breath, which is it, it was un, unseen for Kauzagi. Usually, when Kauzagi would fight, you know, he could throw easily a thousand punches without getting tired. But in that fight, he had a really hard night, and that was one of his hardest fights. 
another one of his hardest fights was against um, Saki Obika. Now, Saki Obika, again, um, and, and Ward also fought Saki Obika, and I'll get to that. Saki Obika was a very rough, very awkward, very ungainly, very... Um, just a very um, unorthodox and unconventional guy to fight, you know, very physically strong, very aggressive, a little bit dirty, a little bit rough, and um, yeah, he had all sorts of troubles in that fight, I mean, that, that was a fight he was supposed to, he, he was supposed to walk through Saki Obika, that was supposed to be an easy title defense, but Saki Obika ended up giving Calzaghe a tougher fight than Mikel Kessler did, a tougher fight than Roy Jones did, a tougher fight than Lacey did, a tougher fight than Richie Woodall, all these other guys, Saki Obika, just because of his raw physicality, you know, his roughness and his ability to get down and dirty, that was what usually gave Kawasaki problems because he would fight to the level of these guys and he would sort of abandon his tactics and have a tear up with these with, with these roughhouse fighters, which really wouldn't do him any good. I mean, another example is when he fought Robin Reed. Robin Reed, again, very dirty, very rough fighter, throws lots of low blows, hits you behind the head, stuff like that. Just a, just a roughhouse type of fighter, a guy, guy who used roughhouse tactics. That was an incredibly tough fight for Kawasaki. He scraped, he scraped through with a split decision that some people thought he lost. I thought he won, but some people disagree. It was very, very close and, and competitive fight. And my point is that those guys, in some ways, I know they're not exactly the same, but in some ways... They're similar to Andre Ward. Now, Andre Ward would have made it a horrible night's work for Kawasaki. He would have gotten inside, he would have roughed him up, he'd have hit him low, he'd hit him behind the head, he'd foul. If they had a proper referee, which Andre Ward never had to deal with in his career, but if they had a proper referee, um, th there's a good chance, a very good chance that this fight might end in a disqualification. Or perhaps um, Ward might have point deductions, which... which um, what would um what am I trying to say? The, the, those point deductions would be pivotal on the scorecards, perhaps. Um, and and again, it could be a, a similar situation to the Kabari Salem fight, where Salem was fouling and then Kalzagi responded with fouls, and both guys ended up having points deducted. And um, Ward had similar fights like that. You know, when he fought um Edwin Rodriguez, it was a similar situation. Both guys got points deducted and whatnot. And my point is, this would be a tough fight to score. This would be a tough fight to watch. It would be messy. It would be awkward. And um, it would be ugly. It would be dirty. It would be scrappy. And it would just be one of those fights. Who do I think would win? Well, you got to factor into a few, th uh, you, you know, a few dynamics there. You look at who these guys have both fought. They both fought, uh, for example, Saki Obika, who I mentioned. Saki Obika gave Kawasaki a tough fight, a tough night's work. However, it was clear to me watching that fight that there was a, a, a difference between the two guys in terms of skill and technique. Whenever Kawasaki decided to box and just keep it fundamental, keep it on the outside, he had no trouble with Bika. It was when Saki Obika got on the inside and used that superior physical strength because he was a lot physically stronger than Kawasaki. It was then that Kawasaki had trouble. It was then that Kawasaki had to overexert himself to get the win. But it was a pretty clear win for Kawasaki. That was, I, I don't think there was any controversy in terms of the scoring. I think that the scoring, it maybe was a little bit wide from what I remember, but I definitely think Kawasaki won the fight. I definitely think he clearly won. And um, he, he did have the last, um, you, you know, the, the, he landed the last punches in, in most of the exchanges and stuff like that. So I do think he won. Now, Andre Ward fought Saki Obika, and Saki Obika gave him a horrible fight. Like, he gave Ward all sorts of trouble, and I got a point out, man, because I, I know I've talked about this before. Andre Ward should have been disqualified and banned from boxing that night. That fight against Saki Obika, go and watch it if you don't believe me. In fact, I've got a, a short film study on that fight. I did a... Um, an expose a few years back on Andrew Ward's illegal tactics, and I believe that's still on my channel. It's, it's in my um, controversies of boxing playlist, and you can check that out if you want to. You can go check that out if you want to see what I'm talking about. But basically, in that fight, Andrew Ward committed more fouls than I think I've ever seen a fighter commit. And I'm not just talking about excessive holding, but he did a lot of excessive holding. Um, he also used mo I think there was like I counted like 12 headbutts something like that it was the the amount of times he headbutted Saki Obika in the face it was shocking there was moments in that fight where he would pin Saki Obika on the ropes with his forearm 
and literally elbow Sakio Bika in the eye in plain view of the referee. The, the commentators, I remember Al Bernstein or whoever it was that was commentating on that fight for, for Showtime. I watched it. I watched it on, I believe it was prime time. Me and my mates watched that fight uh, when when it was on live. And I remember watching it like a few days later with the Showtime commentary. And um, yeah, they, they, they even point out that Ward lands a deliberate elbow in, in Beaker's eye. And, and they were like, huh, that's, that's typical Andre. That's what you call an intentional elbow. Like they, they were making a joke of it as if it was funny. And I'm like, that should have been an immediate disqualification. That was disgraceful. And like I said, there was excessive holding in that fight. There was low blows. It was, it, it was that that was the worst. Whenever people ask me what is the worst officiated fight I've ever seen, I point to that fight, Andre Ward against Sakio Bika. And not only did the referee allow Ward to get away with so much fouling, but Andre Ward, but but but, but the scoring of that fight had Andre Ward winning one twenty one oh eight in a fight that when I first saw it, I thought Sakio Bika won. Um, and I, I've watched the fight since. It was I can't really split them. It was it was very close. It could have been a draw, but that was a very very close fight, very competitive, and the scoring was an absolute disgrace. Um, it was in Andre Ward's hometown, of course, because he never fought anywhere else but Oakland, and um, yeah, he he had all the officials from his home state, and yeah, the fight was scored one twenty one oh eight on I think all the scorecards. It was absolutely disgusting, disgraceful scoring. And um, yeah, that, my point is that was a really tough fight. And that was Sakio Bika, who was somewhat past his prime. So you compare the two performances. Joe Calzaghe did a far better job. Like Joe Calzaghe um, beat Bika pretty clearly on the scorecards. Whereas Ward, in my opinion, got so much support from the officials, it was disgraceful. And um, judging by that performance... Again, you can't really look at one performance and, and use a triangle theory. You can't look at that performance and say that one fighter would win. But based on that performance, I think that Joe Calzaghe, to me, showed a lot more, um, you know, he showed a lot more control, if you know what I mean. Like, he was a lot more stoic under pressure. Like, Andre Ward, as soon as he's under pressure, he resorts to elbows and low blows and all sorts of other shit. Whereas Calzaghe can fight within the rules and still win against that type of fighter. and um, I, I think that based on that, I, I, I would favour Kawasaki slightly, but looking at the other opponent they have, the other noteworthy opponent that they both fought, Mikel Kessler, and it's a similar situation. Kawasaki fought a prime Mikel Kessler back when Mikel Kessler was undefeated, when Mikel Kessler was the WBC and WBA world champion. You know, Mikel Kessler, for example, had some good wins going into that fight. He beat Anthony Mundine. He beat um, Marcus Bayer for the for the WBC title, knocked him out in three rounds. So uh, going into that fight, Kessler was at his prime. Kessler was at the absolute pinnacle of his career. And Kawasaki was, I think, 35 or something when he fought Kessler. So he was... Um, he was 34 or 35 something. He might have been 34. I don't know, but he was he was getting on a bit, and he pretty much schooled Mikel Kessler. Handily outboxed him. Yeah, I've got that fight on DVD, and, and, and Kawasaki handily outboxed Kessler, despite the fact Kessler was younger, bigger, more powerful. And there was even moments in that fight where Kawasaki got caught, and you know he was able to recover quickly. And to me, he showed some very good fundamental skills, you know, because Kawasaki would often get caught in tear-ups and stuff like that, and he would slap the shit out of you and all that, but when he fought Kessler, I thought that was a very educated and very uh, professional performance from him, he looked very good in that fight, and he completely outboxed and schooled Kessler, it was a very impressive performance, probably, I would say that was probably Kawasaki's one of his best performance, if not his best performance, now, he had other fights where he had some impressive knockouts, but I'd say from a technical point of view, from a guy as tough and as durable as Kessler, he outboxed him and schooled him pretty easily um, and, and pretty professionally. Now, Andre Ward fought Mikel Kessler, and again, it was, a, it was a similar situation to the Beaker fight. It was a situation where he should have been disqualified. He won that fight on headbutts, elbows, holding, um, hitting on the brakes, stuff like that. It, it was a disgusting, disgusting performance from Andre Ward, I mean, it was, it, it was on the, um, that, that, that was the first fight that he had in the Super 6 tournament, and I remember watching that, and just being like, wow, this, this is, what a dirty bastard, like, <laughs> this is disgusting, man, and, and, again, it, it should have been a loss, he should have been disqualified, now, had that fight been in Denmark, obviously, he would have been disqualified, and, and had it been in Denmark, 
with a proper referee, let's say they were able to get the fouls under control, who's to say that he would have beaten Kessler? Who's to say that Kessler, in a fair fight, might not have been able to find a way to outbox Andre Ward using just fundamentals, you know, basic boxing fundamentals, because you don't know. Because again, if you take away Andre Ward's fouling, you know, his headbutts, where he opened up three cuts on Kessler's face, where he, you know, was hitting him on the break and all sorts. If you take away all that, he's going to have to compete fairly with Kessler. Would he have been able to do that? I really don't know. Kalzaghi was able to do that. Kalzaghi didn't need to foul to beat Kessler. He beat him within the rules. So, if Kalzaghi and Ward were to fight, judging by what I've seen from them fighting the same opponents, and judging by um, ju just the style matchup in general, I think it would have been a very ugly fight. I think Andrew Ward would definitely have had his moments. But unlike some of those guys, unlike Robin Reed, um, even Saki Obika and um, Kabari Salem, they, those guys were all big punchers. You know, they, they, they were probably um, bigger punchers than, than Andre Ward. Andre Ward was never a puncher. He's physically strong, but he was never that big a puncher for a super middleweight. And I don't think that... I don't think Andre Ward would have been able to drop Calzaghi. That's one thing I don't think would have happened. I don't think he would have been able to hurt him like Robin Reed did or like Saki Obika did. Um, I think the only way that Ward... Like, like, say if Ward were to have gotten a stoppage, it would have had to have been a similar situation to the Kovalev level, the Kessler fights where he was able to force them to capitulate by using fouls, like headbutts and low blows. And um, it would have either gone to the scorecards or he would have got disqualified. And I don't see him beating Kalzaghi. I think Joe Kalzaghi would have won that fight. I think Joe Kalzaghi would have won on points. Um, you know, let, let, Let's put aside the whole... Because I think the most likely outcome, if I'm being perfectly honest, is a disqualification win for Kalzaghi, assuming there was a fair referee or a referee that was willing to do his job which, sadly, Andre Ward never had in his career. Um, I think Kawasaki wins by disqualification. But let's assume that disqualification's off the cards, and that's not going to happen. I think a very close, very close decision um, for Kawasaki based on um, Ward roughing him up and, and you know him having a tear up and it just being an ugly fight. I think the difference there, why I say Kawasaki on points, assuming there's no disqualification, why I say Kawasaki on points is there's one big difference, and that big difference is volume. No super middleweight has ever been, at least from what I can see, no super middleweight that I can see can match Joe Calzaghe for volume. Like I said, this guy could throw a thousand punches a fight before even breaking a sweat. He could throw a thousand punches a fight and then go for a run up the valleys, and, and he, he could do that. I'm not even kidding. He had that kind of fitness. He had that kind of stamina. And whenever he got hurt in the ring, he could fight like an absolute madman. He could fight like crazy. And I think he would have outworked Andre Ward. I don't think Ward would have thrown enough punches or negated enough of Calzaghi's punches from weird angles. You know, those big wide slaps he would throw inside and those combinations he would throw, you know, where the first two would be pitter patters and then the second, you know, the uh, third and fourth would be power punches. I don't think Andre Ward would have avoided enough of them to give Andre Ward the victory on points. So I think Joe Calzaghe would have won on points in a very close fight. So I'd say Calzaghe by disqualification, and assuming there's no disqualification, Calzaghe on points. That's how I see this fight. I see Joe Calzaghe winning by unanimous decision. Um, if not a disqualification, Calzaghe by unanimous decision. That's how I see this fight. So that was an interesting one to talk about. Let me know what you guys think. I'm sure there's going to be people who disagree, and I'm sure there's going to be people who agree. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching, and yeah, God bless each and every one of you.